bad movies beware because wherever you are these people will find you and uh, it's it's gonna happen regardless uh, and I'm here with one of those guys now. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Red Letter Media, more specifically the show Best of the Worst. And I'm here with one of the gang right now. He also co-hosts uh, previously recorded with Rich Evans, talking about all the latest video games going on. Jack Packard. Hello, Jack. Whoa! You are here and ready to roll. <laughs> I am here. I'm now. glad. I'm glad. Coming from us from Milwaukee. I, I, w let me ask you, why Milwaukee? Where, where, why was that the place to set up RLM? <laughs> I, that, uh, that's not my call. This is where I've lived. I've all, I, I grew up uh, in, um, in kind of in between Milwaukee and Chicago. Right. Uh, in far in farm country in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, very famously, grew up on a farm, and I moved to Milwaukee as I got older, as I got out of the farm and. This is just where I've been living, and then all of a sudden, these jackasses from Chicago come up here, <laughs> Mike and Jay and Rich, mm -hmm. and think they run the joint. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that... Uh, well, no, I, I think this is just where uh, this is just where they ended up uh, for a while. They were doing, you know, kind of uh, for hire videography work, and I, I just uh, I met them here in Milwaukee because we all made videos. Right. How long have you been with them now? Oh Lord! Like I'm still not technically with them. It's actually a very strange. We have a, a very weird business relationship. Like I, I'm not an employee of Red Letter Media. Mm -hmm. I just hang around and they put me in videos. <laughs> you, uh, you just walk in and say, "Hey, you want to be in this week's Best of the Worst?" You're like, "Okay, sure." Pr pretty much, mm -hmm. pretty much. And so, like you know, but we've been making video get together. Is like when. Oh Lord! When I'm trying to remember my first video with them, I'm trying to remember when the Grabowskis. I'm going to look it up right now. Oh Lord, that's like seven years do, ago. Do you remember the Grabowskis? I do remember the Grabowski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe uh, I've been with them for about. I've been, I've been making videos with them for about seven years now, mm -hmm. and it, it just so happened, like I said, we met through mutual friends, and I made videos, and they made videos, and. Uh, as someone who makes videos, it's always really hard to find someone to be in front of the camera. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we just, we got along immediately and we had a very similar sense of humor. And, 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 and now they just, now they just keep me around because I'm usually available. You, they put out the food, you feed, you eat it, and then you just keep hanging around. Wait, do other people get food? They do, yeah. Josh especially, and I think Rich does, but, uh, but that's just, <laughs> that's just, you know, favoritism out of the whole deal, but, you know. I think so. Like I, I have a deal where I can uh, I, I steal Mike's energy drinks all the time, uh, and every once in a while I'll, I'll take a beer or two out of the fridge. Okay, I'm, that's that's about it. That's shocking that Mike has energy drinks because all I see him drinking is alcohol. So uh, he he seems like he always wants to dumb down his senses, not raise them at all. <laughs> you have to you know you have to balance like one energy drink, two beers, one energy drink, two beers. That, that so. makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, how did you and uh, and Rich come up with prereq? What what brought that on? Uh, well, that that started after Best of the Worst, um, and you know, I Rich is the person who I met last. I, I think I met Jay first, and then you know, after Jay, I met Mike and started hanging out with them. And Rich at the time still lived in Chicago, and so he would kind of drive up for shoots every once in a while. And then when Best of the Worst started, he had finally moved up. And uh, really, what would happen is in between watching movies, Rich and I would. In, in trying to bring up nerd conversation to the whole group, say, hey, did you guys hear about that video game? And Mike and Jay would immediately, their eyes would glaze, glaze. over. And, <laughs> and Rich would be like, oh, yes, I know of the video games. And I'd say, oh, great, comic books. Right. And Rich said, yes, <laughs> I know comic books. Yeah. Uh, and, and we just, we, we, uh, we got along because we were the nerdiest of the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know Rich had tried with uh, with his old video game show, Game Station 2.0. Uh, the only problem is Rich doesn't know how to edit. And so Rich wrote the script, and then either Mike or Jay had to edit it, mm -hmm. and they don't care about video games <laughs> Exactly. I, I, I think uh, I remember one time you were talking about, on that show... They had edited it, and they didn't. They didn't. They wouldn't put in the parts where the, that Rich was talking about. They would just put in random scenes from the video games. Is that right? Right, right. Because they because they didn't care, and they didn't care to go through hours of footage. Right. And so like, 
it, it was it was for Rich's Vanquish review, and he was talking about how satisfying the shotgun felt. Yeah. And then they didn't use footage of him using the shotgun in Vanquish. It was, come on, guys, this is basic 101. 101, you think somebody in editing would realize, someone mentions a shotgun. I should find a shotgun to put in this scene. This might work. But, and that's just how little Mike and Jay cared about video games in general. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, they're always looking for stuff to supplement their videos because it takes a long time to edit a best of the worst. Mm -hmm. And sometimes no movies are coming out for half in the bag and they just don't feel like making anything. And so previously recorded was a chance for video content to be made completely outside of Mike and Jay. Mm. Uh, Cause I can edit and I can shoot and Rich and I can do all the work on that end. And, uh, Unfortunately, when we started the show, I only had two cameras at the time, which is why all the early episodes only have the back and forth cameras. Right, right. Because I wanted it to be completely separate from uh, Mike and Jay. Yeah. And now it, we just kind of have our own thing. We have, we're we're off in our little corner of, of Red Letter Media. And that's nice, yeah. Because I love Mike and Jay, but uh, their arty farty pretentiousness tends to take its toll, and so I enjoy listening to yours and Rich's conversations a little bit better. Because uh, they just <laughs> seem to be more—they're more up my alley. They're more entertaining. <laughs> hey, listen, we're not trying to offend any no. arty farty. No, 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 no. I, I love arty farty. That's right. Love, and I love Mike and and Mike and Jay. But uh, holy cannoli, sometimes, just sometimes, especially Jay, I, I, I. I <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, look, I love Jay. I love Jay. It's just, there are times that I'm like, I have no idea where you're going with that. What does that even mean? I don't understand you yeah. sometimes, but it's... it's. They're, they're old film school people, you know, yeah. and I, I never got into film school, uh, so I just started making videos of my own, but, you know, they're the type of people that can that can talk about, you know, the, the different editing techniques and styles, and they go deep into, well, this is the... Uh, the Kuleshov effect. So oh, well, yeah. we're referencing <laughs> Chekhov's gun. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've almost turned it into a drinking game uh, where on best of the worst and half in the bag. When will Mike bring up Star Trek? At some point, it will happen. When will he bring up Star Trek? And he always does it. He never fails. Both Mike and Rich are terrible, and you know Star Trek's a great series, but. Yeah. It's, it shouldn't be your point of reference for every single piece of media. It, it all doesn't go back to Star Trek. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So have you always been a big gamer? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, like, I'm about to give my cred. Uh, right. I had I have children. I have two children, and so when when my two children were very young, gaming took a huge dive because right. there's just no time. Uh, but then I started getting back into it uh, right around Team Fortress Two era. Mm -hmm. So you know, like obviously I played as a kid. I love. I had an N sixty four and oh, yeah. all that. I we even had a was it a, a Sega Saturn? That was our big oh, one. Oh lord, really? Yeah, it was a bad choice. But, you know, I was a kid, and, and my mom found it on sale or something. Yeah. And so we had a Sega Saturn, and we loved the hell out of that. Right. Had all the Nintendos, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in college, uh, you know, the big the big drinking game was always Mario Kart. Yeah. Yeah. And before you could drive home, to make sure you were sober, you had to play Mario Kart to prove to us that you were sober. That is brilliant. Uh, right? That and is then, brilliant. You know, if you didn't... If you didn't perform well enough, uh, then you could, you'd have to sleep on the couch. But, oh. But so then when the uh, the Xbox 360 era came back around and, you know, the orange box gets released and we get, we get all the, the Half-Lifes and Team Fortress 2 and just uh, the, the swell of uh, indie games, mm -hmm. uh, it was really fantastic. And then as PC gaming, I'm, I'm a Mac user, and so I, I wasn't able to take part in a lot of PC gaming. But as right. uh, Steam came to Mac... More games came to Mac. I got to play a little bit more, and now I play all the time, which is great. Right, because Mac is the bomb, and I have a Mac too, and I, I, <laughs> I never regretted making that uh, making that switch for sure. Um, okay, so we were talking about best of the worst. Uh, how did it get started? What 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 convinced everybody that that was uh, the show to do? Uh, I, part of it, part of it is I don't know. Uh, because I actually, I wasn't there for the first episode that they filmed. Right. Uh, and 
Uh, here's what I can tell you. Before Best of the Worst, we would get together all the time and just have bad movie nights, mm-hmm. whether it be at someone's house or at the studio. And we had a great time every time. And when you're content creators, you're always looking for the next thing to make. And eventually we said, hey, maybe we're good enough to film this. Right. And like I said, I wasn't there that first episode, so I, I don't know whose idea it was uh, to get Best of the Worst started. Right. Or who came up with the format, or like, why is it three videos, or why do they all have to have a common thread? It's it's, it's all it's all a mystery to me. I just show up and try to try to make fun of bad movies. Right. Does it get like just almost exhausting trying to make that show? Because I feel like not, at not, times <laughs> it's not almost exhausting. It is exhausting. Because <laughs> you know we. We don't watch the movies beforehand. Yeah. You know, like, a lot of people will compare us to something like Mystery Science Theater. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and with Mystery Science Theater, they're actually kind of watching a movie and taking notes and writing a script and refining mm. the script, and then they shoot the script. For us, it's all improv. It's, it's yeah. whatever we can come up with while we watch it. And it's three movies. And if, you know, if uh, three movies are, are two hours long each, that's six hours. And then we talk for another hour and a half. And that's seven and a half hours. God. And that's, uh, it's an entire day and it's exhausting. And now that we're on episode 50 something, 50, yeah, we're getting close to 50. Yeah. It, the, the real hard part is coming up with new shit to talk about. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, how many times can you point out that the boom has dropped into the shot or how many times can you, can you make fun of uh, of uh, Cameron Mitchell? Hopefully, hopefully we'll never run out of Cameron Mitchell. You'll never run out of that, ne- never. And then the answer to those questions is many, many, many times because that's that's <laughs> the quality of movies that are on Best of the Worst. It's it's something that I used to worry about. Like eventually we're going to run out of bad '80s movies, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 then eventually we're going to run out of like '70s exploitation movies. But then. Uh, uh, we we have ascended to the Church of Breen. Ah, yeah. We met a filmmaker named Neil Breen who made his first movie in like 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people like this still exist who are still making their own movies, we will never run out of material. Right. That that was a... that His movie that you all did a couple years ago was a level of mind fuck I'll never be able to get out of. Seriously. That that was ridiculous. (laughs) And he's got a new one out too, right now. I think he's he's working on another one, and unfortunately, we've only seen the one. Mm-hmm. We've only seen the one because uh, Jay and Mike are still waiting for Max Landis to come back to Milwaukee, <laughs> and Max Landis has been to Milwaukee once, yes, and doesn't really want to come back. Really? That tells you the drawing. Well, oh no, I'm sure he does. I, it's well, scheduling. I, well, I'm, that, not, yeah. I'm not involved with that. That was right. more of a joke. Well, I, I know that they Mike and Jay bust his chops all the time, so I don't really know if he would want to come back or not. I just. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Was... <laughs> no, no. I think they have a very cordial relationship. Oh, that's good. It, he was actually really fun to have in town because he works in the industry. Right. And he could give us some stories of actual behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, he's a screenwriter, and he was telling us stories of, of movies that he had to change the script for because of producer interjection of stories that I am not at liberty to share. Mm-hmm. But there were there were marvelous stories and and he was he was real fun to have in town. That's I got awesome. to, Rich and I got to read a sneak peeks of his uh, American Alien Superman comic, which was great. Really, wow, that is pretty awesome. <clears throat> well, I, I know that uh, yeah, that is pretty cool. Now I know that uh, Mike and Jay have seen it because they did half in the bag on it. Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two yet? I have, I have. I saw it this weekend. I was really excited to see it this weekend. Yeah, how was this it? Past weekend, right. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the, and you know, this happens uh, sometimes. But I really disagree with Mike and Jay, and I did really? not really care for Guardians too. Yeah. Ooh. See, we're going yeah. to see, we're going to see it tonight, so I wanted to get uh, somebody's you know, idea on it before we went. But because Mike and Jay raved about it, I mean, I'd never seen such uh, a happy episode of Half in the Bag, not in a while. <laughs> they were very happy. And you know, a lot of a lot of people are like you. You saw Volume One, I assume. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, I won't get into any spoilers with Volume 2, but if you reference Volume 1, he, he returned to a lot of stuff that I didn't... And, you know, Volume 1, I was kind of iffy on. Mm-hmm. Um, volume 1, I thought, 
he, he relied too much on the same kind of joke, which is ha- have a swelling emotional moment that is immediately undercut by a wise ass comment. Right, right. That also, J- James Gunn has a huge problem of telling and not showing. Yeah, yeah. He is every character. If you look at Volume One, every character has a giant monologue explaining their backstory. They it's do. Like, Just show me. They do. Show me some actions. That is so true. Uh, it goes on and on in that film. <laughs> and for for me. A lot of that returns in Volume Two, and there's some really good stuff in Volume Two. Like, and, and if you haven't seen it yet, I won't, I won't spoil it for you because there is some really genuinely good moments and some really good character moments. Right. But now that kind of the newness of this weird alien universe has worn off because we've had that in Volume One. Right. To me, the flaws stick out a little bit more, so I didn't care for it. Right. I know. I know everyone loves it. Everyone right. Loves it. Well, and, and that good leads to a good question, like. Where do you see tw- how do you how do you see twenty seventeen looking cinematically, especially when it comes to these comic book movies? Like, are we good, bad? What's this year look like? What is, what's come out so far? I'm trying to even remember. Oh, uh, let's what see. What happened this year? Uh, well, let's see. Well, we had Power Rangers earlier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and big Rangers. big laugh following Power Rangers. Uh, we, well, we've got a Justice League coming up, and then we got Wonder Woman coming up. We've got the next Star Wars coming out, like what? Oh, and we got Thor, right? We've got Thor the next. Ragnarok we've got the next awesome. Thor. Yes, and that will be good. Yeah. But like, I'm how super does, excited about that. Right, but it's just like, I mean, is is this good? Is this bad? Like, I don't know how to filter this. I don't know how what how to look at it. <laughs> I don't. I, I I'm a I'm a not only am I a big comic book person, but I love action movies, mm-hmm. and so for me. The more comic book movies, the better. The more superhero movies, the better. I fucking love superheroes. So, to me, it's not a real problem. The, the problem is when they do it, how I, what I feel is poorly. Like, I don't know, did you see Iron Fist? No, I didn't see that one. On Netflix? Wait, no, yes, I did see that. Really sloppy. I did see that, yes, on oh, Netflix, okay. yeah. Yeah, like, the Iron Fist Marvel was kind of dull. Yeah. And the Defenders... Maybe he's going to be good. And, and you know, I didn't care for Guardians. And I don't even remember what came out earlier this year. But I, I feel like comic books have an inherent problem, mm-hmm. which is their longevity. Yeah. You can't keep telling the same story over and over and over again. And we're hitting that point in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, you know, like, I'm not used to having a person to look at it. So I keep looking at You're my looking microphone as if I'm talking right. to you. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, We're hitting that point in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with longevity, and they're running out of fresh stories to tell. And this was an initial fear of mine when they started making comic book movies, is eventually they're going to fall into the same trappings as the comic books themselves. We're starting to get convoluted backstories. We're starting to retell stories. We're starting to rehash characterization that has already happened in other books. And so... Once we get to this culmination of Infinity Gauntlet, or the Infinity War, it's going to be really interesting to see how they try to reset the universe. Is it going to be a big event, something like like another Civil War, or something like at the end of Infinity Gauntlet where they actually bend space and time and the universe is reset and we get new actors and new stories. Right. And that's, that's a good point. And, you know, I, it's, like I, it's like you said, I love comic book movies too, but you're right. It just seems like, it, like there's one right after the other. Like they're starting to fall over each other. There's just so many. And then, yeah, you're right. It's just, it's like the same story over and over just with different people. It's really, and that's what it, especially, oh God, DC. God help DC, seriously. <laughs> well, I, you know, I can't be excited about Justice League because no. I know that Zack Snyder is still involved. Right. And, and Batman vs. Superman was such... A, a tremendous clusterfuck, and Suicide Squad was a joke. <laughs> the only hope that they have left is Wonder Woman is, e- even if Wonder Woman is competent, right? Like if Wonder Woman just reaches the bar, then maybe. Yeah. But who knows? Because Zack Snyder is producing that, right. so we have. I have no idea what to expect for comic book movies, right. except for Thor looks great, and and uh, Ta- Taiki. Taiki. Taiki Wakala. Right. I'm not even. I, I think he, that's. He's a very. 
Is think, that his name? I, I think so. I think that's how it's pronounced. I can't really remember. Taiki, Taiki, I think. He's a very interesting director, and he has a really strong voice and style. Yeah. And we can only hope a little bit of that voice comes through in the edit. Right, right. That's and, the... You know, like, it, that's, it, that's the hope, anyway. Seriously. Mm-hmm. It is. And, and you know what? We, we got really lucky with some Marvel movies. Like, Joss Whedon mm. did a fantastic job with Avengers. Yes. We got, we got John Favreau, who basically set the entire tone of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For sure. Uh, we, we, got, we got fucking Shane Black and Iron Man 3 being the most perfect action movie ever fucking yes. made. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting very interesting directors. Uh, uh, I, I forget what his name was. He's, uh, he's going to direct the Black Panther movie. I can't remember. Uh, he made Creed. Did you see Creed? I, I did see Creed, yes. I mean, which was a fucking Creed great, is fantastic. Fucking that, great film, that's right. It's great, and now he's directing Black Panther, and so like Marvel keeps making really interesting directorial choices. Right, unlike DC, we, uh, unlike DC, where that... it's just like, here, Zach, take more, take more. <laughs> right? How many people have dr- dropped out of the Flash movie at this point? Um, I, I want to say even... they've lost their third director. I've lost count. I've lost count. It's ridiculous, but I'm not surprised, not one bit. <laughs> so. You know, I'll keep watching them as long as they're good. And, right. But, you know, like, Guardians was pretty disappointing. You, you look at something like Doctor Strange, which, like, visually was very exciting. And it was really different enough, and it had a really satisfying conclusion. Did you see Doctor Strange? I did not see Doctor Strange. Okay. No spoilers, but no spoilers. a very satisfying ending to Doctor Strange. And really fantastic visuals. But the... the the general hero's journey was the exact hero's journey you've seen. The rehash, you know? rehash, rehash. Rehash, rehash, rehash. But they they set up an interesting character. So right. may, maybe. Maybe. Know? Maybe, maybe. Well, let's, away from like comic book movies, this was a question I thought really long and hard about. What's the future of filmmaking at this point? Will it stay this way? Or will creativity make... A, like a massive comeback. Uh, well, it creativity. Uh, th- this is a, a a needle point for me, so this is a good topic. Right. Creativity is at an all time high, and I, I think some people something that people are missing a lot on is movies. More art house weirdo movies are being made now than ever before. They're just not seeing a theatrical release. Right. But things like video on demand. Netflix, uh, Hulu Originals, Amazon Originals. We are seeing fantastic movies being made that never, ever would have been made 10 years ago. That's true. Stuff That's true. like The Vavitch, or Swiss Army Man, or The Neon Demon, or uh, The Green Room, oh, yeah. or a, a, a million of these little weirdo art house what what's that movie jay really talks talks about uh, the greasy strangler no. <laughs> <laughs> but we but they're not being released in theaters and so no one is thinking about them as this renaissance of creativity right and you know even even in talking i, I have some friends who are filmmakers like like hollywood filmmakers mm-hmm. and in talking to someone like max landis they are bemoaning the the downfall of Hollywood, and it's like, you know what? You can still get your movie made and seen. You're just not going to get the paycheck that you used to. Right, right. And and that's a great thing. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're seeing a democratization of creativity. Right, right. And I finally... Just quote me on that shit. I will quote you on that one. <laughs> and I finally saw the Vavitch, you, and I thought your, it was fucking your video fantastic. Has frozen. Oh, am I, am I moving now? Your video has frozen on me. And so... Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, now we're back? It. Okay. Yeah, but I, I was just saying... I, we're I, back. I, yeah. I, we, we're, I'm losing connection. I, I'm in a bad part of the house, but we'll, we'll, we're, we're fine for now. Uh, but I, I was just saying... Uh, I, I was just saying... I'd just seen the Favitch uh, a, a little while ago, and uh, I, you're all right. Fantastic film. Fantastic film. Right, and it's, it's a fantastic film that never would have made it past a big-budget... Hollywood box office because there's not enough gore to like get the gore hounds in there 
and there's no stars and it's a weird premise and it, it has no it has no selling point like you how do you make a trailer for the Vavitch? right <laughs> it's very difficult Right, but the filmmaker was able to make it happen, and they found distribution, mm-hmm. and it was it found its home on video on demand, and we should be really excited about that. Yeah, and and that's a perfect point. I didn't think about those video on the on demand things. You do find better films from there than you do at your local theater. It's so true, so true. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Well, and you know what? We're still going to have movie theaters for the big blockbusters. Right, right. And now, like. Our local big chains are now doing like weekly events where they will screen older movies or they'll screen uh, foreign films. Oh, or yeah. they'll, they even have a thing where they're, they're showing like stuff from the Sydney Opera House. Like they're playing operas. Those are those uh, like. And so like theaters. Those, they're like those, those, fathom, those fathom events things that they have. Is that what those are? I think so. Like yeah. it's, it's basically just a, a way to get more butts in the seats. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Burke. Oof. It's all right. Uh, so, so, but we will see something happen to movie theaters that we've seen happen to something like playhouses, mm-hmm. where movie theaters are going to be the home for blockbusters and these weirdo events, right? And then everything else is going to go to the to the TV and video on demand, which I'm perfectly okay with. Yeah, really, that's that's for the best, to be honest. That's not that's pretty the best way to go, I think, at least for the. Uh, for the, for the more down to earth films, you'd rather just watch them at home than go out and see them. So it makes a lot more sense. Well, and, you know the the ups and downs to that is there are some movies that play better in a theater. Mm-hmm. You know, like you go see a comedy, you want to see a comedy in a packed theater because then that laughter just becomes contagious. Right. Right, and also the way a filmmaker edits a movie is edited towards a live audience. Like mm-hmm. you know, they'll edit in the laugh breaks and they'll edit in those beats to get the biggest audience reaction. Right. So there's going to be a big adjustment period toward editing a movie towards a home audience. Yeah. And it, it's been an awkward turn. Like, what were the big ones last year? The uh, the Key and Peele movie, Keanu. Oh, uh, Keanu. Yeah. And. Uh, and what was the Lonely Island movie? Pop Star. Yeah. Like, I, I eventually got to see those on video on demand because I didn't get out to the theater. And both I thought were very funny, but you could, there were big dead moments for me watching at home that I could tell were in there for the uh, the theater audience, right. for, the, for the laughter of the theater. Right. And so, like, they didn't hit their full potential with me watching them at home. It's, it's, it'll be interesting. Yeah, be yeah. It, it's got to find its balance, I suppose. All right, so I have to ask you this question because we all saw what happened on the last episode of Best of the Worst, which was a wheel episode. We all know what happened to the wheel of the worst. It was destroyed by Mr. Stoklasa, and you immediately yeah. you immediately got thrown under the bus because you did it three years ago. So that it, they blamed it on you. They said it was your fault that that the wheel got destroyed yeah. because you did it once before. So what what's up with that? What 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 the, what is the deal? What is the deal? Oh, and, and hey, let's not let's not uh, pussyfoot around this. They didn't throw me under the bus. Mike, Mike still threw you. Did. That's right. Mike threw that you under the bus. Son of a bitch. But Josh agreed. He was with you. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. My it was it was Jack's fault. Absolutely. Jack's fault. Yeah. So so uh, on a very old episode of the Wheel, and I I have never really liked the Wheel episodes because there's just not a whole lot to talk about sometimes. I I want to say it was only my second Wheel of the Worst episode. They had me on, and I knocked it over. And this was only the third wheel episode in existence, so like right. I pushed it over <laughs> because I didn't even think that this was going to be a long running tradition. Right. And I said, "Fuck it, and I hate, I don't like the wheel anyway." Yeah. Mike pushes it over, basically stealing my bit. Yeah. Right. That that asshole stole my bit, <laughs> and then blames me because he broke it. <laughs> he breaks the damn uh, thing. And and, and uh, you know. I, I I haven't seen him since. I'll be honest with you. I have not seen Mike since that episode. He I think he's ashamed to look me in the eyes. I wouldn't be surprised. He should feel bad about it. Exactly, because Rich was pissed at him, and he's like, "Really, really? If you're blaming Jack, if Jack jumped off a cliff, you would jump off too." I mean, because that's just ridiculous. 
Well, and also like Rich built it. That's, yeah. that's one of Rich's job at the studio. He's the prop builder, he right? Did, like, and so the wheel was his baby, and it's gone now. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just you know split in twain. Is he trying to fix it? Is or is he working on a new one or anything? It's like at this point, what's the point? It's just, Mike's just going to push it over again. <laughs> that's true. Keep him away from the plinketto <laughs> board. Don't let him get near the plinketto <laughs> board. <laughs> Because that's, you talk about something getting destroyed and just being a heartbreak. Oh, my Lord. How long did it take, how long did it take Rich to make that? The Plinketto board took a shockingly large amount of time only because, you know, uh, Mike had the idea for the Plinketto board. Mm -hmm. So Rich started sketching up some ideas. But then Mike bought the materials for the first Plinketto board, which were like solid pieces of heavy wood. And it, and, you know, it's a big board, so Mike bought four solid pieces and thought that Rich could somehow screw them together. Right. And, you know, Rich said, you're an idiot. This is <laughs> never going to work. And sure enough, it crumbled under its own weight. Oh, God. And so Plinketto board version one crumbled, like, before we could even shoot an episode with it. Man. Uh, then Rich went out, bought his own materials, built version number two. And we're on number like we're on version two point five now, where we finally got the ball working right. We have the the base working right. But I want to say in total, it took Rich a month and a half, two months just to build that thing. Good lord! Well, it shows. I mean, it's it's a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. But I I just like that's just something I could never do. I'm just like, how does Rich come up with this like idea of just of creating all of that? This is crazy. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's well, you know, you, you got a, a warehouse full of tools and, and lumber. You, you start putting shit together. Right. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I, I do blame you and Rich for doing something to me. Uh, I haven't eaten Taco Bell in probably 10, 15 years. And then I saw the damn review, and it's it, it, product placement freaking works. And I went out and got a Taco Bowl, and damn it, I'm hooked to those now. So I'm eating at Taco Bell, like, all the time. Oh man, that new taco burrito is full real. Do you have that down in Tennessee? It's just it's just a big soft shell taco with little crunchy things in it. Oh yeah. I do legitimately love Taco Bell. Yeah. And Rich makes fun of me constantly because I do love Taco Bell, but I don't give a fuck. It's tasty and it's cheap. It is. That's very true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. That was a fun review. Uh, Demolition Man. Right. I'd forgotten about uh, that. And, you know, it was just one of those things. Yeah, I'd forgotten about the you Taco Bell. You forgot about thing. Demolition Man? Well, no, I forgot about the Taco Bell part, and I've not seen it in a while. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a really great one. And, you know, obviously, and, you know, the funny thing about that bit is we showed up to, to shoot, and, you know, Jade's there to shoot, and, and Rich and I are on camera, and all of a sudden we start talking about it, and Rich, this was Rich's idea again, is like, Maybe we should go get some Taco Bell and just do this. It was his idea. We're like, well, Rich, it was his idea, and I was like, Rich, we're, we're right in the middle of the shoot. You want to finish the shoot first? He's like, No, no, no. We need to start the episode with us just silently eating Taco Bell. <laughs> and, and then it's like, Well, do we just shut this all down and go for a drive? It's like, Yeah, fuck it, shut it down. So we we stopped the whole shoot so Rich could go get some Taco Bell. Unbelievable. And, and it took him a, uh, like a comically long amount of time. Like, you know, there's the Taco Bell was a drive away. Yeah. And then uh, apparently, like, he ordered this giant bucket of tacos. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. That was my dinner. So uh, like, there I felt you go. great about it. You got fed and worked at the same time. Nothing wrong with that. Um, exactly. Right. You know, so, fun, fun little fact. Here's, here's, a, here's an exclusive. Yes. Rich and I actually shot a second review that same day. Really? That has yet to be released. I, I won't tell you what it is because it's way more fun, you know, when that when that uh, notification pops up. But we shot a second review that day that has yet to see the light of day. I think I think I have an idea of what it is. I won't say what it is, but I, th I think I know what it is. I think I know what's coming up. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that sounds exciting. I'm glad. I'm, I, I love the reviews. I just I you know because you always I always had that thought before the show started, like. I wish they had been around when this movie was out so that they could have reviewed that when it was out. And it's like, oh, this is the glory now. They can go back and watch these movies. Well, it's a lot less, it, or it's a lot more casual. You yeah. know, like if if you're on Half in the Bag, I've, I've only been on Half in the Bag once to, do, to like actually talk about a movie. And to me, that was really stressful. Yeah. Uh, and like when Rich and I do previously recorded, you know, editing that and just making sure that we say the right thing and, and like get our facts straight and 
and all of our criticism our criticisms are backed up properly, that's that's very stressful. And so like a review is just a chance to have a conversation right. about something like without necessarily being hypercritical of it. It's very nice. That's, that's a very nice, very refreshing show to do. <coughs> so um, I guess we're about to wrap up here. What's next for Prereq? What, what are you guys coming up? We have no idea. We <laughs> we we were so burnt out. We 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 pushed out three episodes really quickly. We did uh, we did Neo right into uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, mm -hmm. right into uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Right. And those are three very big games. Uh, yes, they are. And and Breath of the Wild specifically. Uh, I know Rich. Like I had, I ended that at eighty hours, and Rich has like two hundred and thirty hours in Breath of the Wild, and you just can't. Like it's it's hard to move on yeah. after those games, like especially Breath of the Wild, which is honestly beautiful. It is. It's just hard for us to find something that we care about as much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's understandable. Uh, so you know, we recently did Bayonetta, which is a nice, simple brawler, which kind of helped reset the clock, but we have no idea what we're doing next. Right. I know uh, Strafe, Strafe just came out today, which is supposed to be a really uh, intense first-person shooter. Right. But we also had a... Uh, we did an impromptu interview with one of the creators of Strafe uh, live on stream one night. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're Kickstarter backers of Strafe, and so... It, that's kind of like that gray area of can we be objective right. if we do a review strafe. And, and other than that, we have no idea what we're doing next. Right now we're just actually just playing old Zelda games just because we like, we're back in the Zelda swing of it. So Nothing wrong maybe with we'll that. Maybe we'll do an episode talking about old Zelda games. Nothing wrong with that. I loved Zelda as a kid. And I've not played Breath of the Wild, but I have friends who do. And it, you're right, it's just, a, it's just a beautiful game to look at, just to watch. Right? It's yeah. shocking. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. Rich, Rich did it on stream a couple times, and it's just so many times I'd get lost. I wouldn't talk to the chat, and I'd just watch what he was doing and go, right. oh, that's so cool. Right, it is. <laughs> and, and I, and I want to thank you because they forced, my friends forced me to play this game, and it sucked, and you hated it too. It was 1 2 Switch, I, I, or Stitch, whatever it's called. I hated that game. I hate that game. It's not like we, what, you know, on the Wii when you play Bold and everything. That game just sucks. Oh my God, that was. We thought we thought at least we could get some like comedy on a stream out of it, right? And it wasn't even worth it to make fun of it on stream. It was <laughs> it was nothing. It was it was embarrassing. It, it, it's an embarrassing game. It is, and and you know, like unfortunately, uh, the the switch in general. I keep going back and forth on whether or not I want to recommend it. Rich and I actually shot an episode about the switch. Mm -hmm. uh, that we ended up. I ended up not airing because it was really boring because rich doesn't have any strong feelings about it right so it was just me talking about the switch and i, I kept going back and forth i was like oh i love taking it on the go but it doesn't have that great a battery life and also you need to buy a case because it has a screen on the outside and i love it as a console but the controller sucks so you need to buy an extra controller and it doesn't have any games and it doesn't have bluetooth capabilities and it's it's, it's kind of good right it's it's okay so. we'll say that it gets by Exactly. So yeah. that that was one of our. I want to say that was our third episode that we've completely shot and edited and decided not to release, not to release. because it turned out to be boring. Jeez. Well, that's understandable. Uh, well, Jack, I cannot thank you enough for putting up with my crap for almost an hour. Uh, it was such a pleasure. I love you guys. I love your work. Keep up the great work, and thanks for doing everything that you all do. Seriously, thank you. Oh, thanks for having me on. It was a good, good chat. Absolutely. Is there, is there any sort of outro or outro? Well, it's this right here. We've been talking to Jack Packard of Red Letter Media on the Smoking Hot Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>